With this diagram, we are going to show and demonstrate how a L8148 Aquastat is wired into a gas-fired boiler. So first off, we need to always make sure that we go through all of our safeties on a uh, any sort of wiring diagram. So this particular um, diagram, we have our breaker, an emergency switch, fire mag switch, and a service switch. These are really your typical um, safety switches that are going to be found in many of your uh, residential homes. Uh, the one that is definitely kind of optional you may find or may not find is definitely the firematic switch. Um, I've, I know I've run into it where some furnaces have had or some boilers have had it and some have not. So to wire this we got to start off with L1 and we got to come and we're going to wire in our breaker into our emergency switch. Because remember, safeties are always wired in series with each other. Come down, we're going to come into our firematic switch. Out of our firematic switch, and then into our service switch. Okay. So breaker obviously is going to be found in the breaker panel. Your emergency switch is going to be the switch at the top of the stairs that some people commonly mistake for a light switch and accidentally shut it off in the middle of winter. Then you have your firematic switch. Sometimes the firematic switch is if you look up above the furnace or boiler that you're working on, you may actually see what looks like a fusible uh, disc type switch that is I kind of like maybe um, screwed to the, the rafters or the beams above the the, apple, the appliance. That's usually a firematic switch. Basically how the firematic switch works is in the event of a fire, the uh, little fusible link there that's uh, attached to the switch will actually melt and inside that switch is a spring. The spring will actually release and it kills the power to the furnace. And along with that you actually have your service switch which is right at the furnace itself. So out of our service switch we need to go into our aquastat. So out of the switch we're going to come up and we're going to go to the aquastat. Okay so out of the aquastat let's change our color. I want to go I'm going to use blue for my neutral. Okay out of my blue is my neutral. Okay. So here's my blue. Come out of my neutral. And I'm going to go back to neutral, just like that. Okay. So that's my first line of of circuitry going through it. I have now powered up that L8148 Aquastat. What do I need to do now? Remember, in the Aquastats, Aquastats are going to have a transformer in there. That transformer is what's going to be providing our serve our 24 volts to our thermostat. So we need, like I said, on an aquastat you have your different designations. L1, neutral, L1, L2 is going to be your power coming into the aquastat. Your TT is going to be your your thermostat. C1, C2 is your circulator. Uh, B1, B2, or B3 is going to be for your your burners. Okay, so let's take care of that thermostat first. So what I'm really doing here is I'm just going to bring power out to my my R. Out of that, I'm going to come right back into my aquastat because remember, all that is is nothing more than a switch. Yeah, I'm going to use that color for now. So let's come and we're going to do that. Okay. So that's my switch. Once my thermostat closes, I have now sent the signal to the thermostat, to the aquastat saying, 
I now have to have a call for heat. The next one that I'm going to take care of is going to be the circulator. All right, the circulator is relatively simple. Okay, we're just taking C1 and we are going to just bring power in, bring power back out. Okay, what that is demonstrating here is my power coming in. So once my, my relay closes on my 8148, I'm now going to energize my circulator. The circulator will now start to spin, uh, delivering my, my water to my space. So now remember with your 8148 aquastats, this is a triple aquastat. Okay, I have B1, B2, and B3. Okay, B1 and B3 is going to give me my 24 volts that I need to power up my module. If I was to wire B1 and B2, that would be millivolts. I am not dealing with a millivolt surf system here. I'm dealing with a 24 volt system. So I have to send power from my B1 down to my TH. And okay, so out like this. And in to my TH. Out of my TR, I'm going to bring it right back to my uh my B3. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to come right on over to my B3. Because remember, my B3 is my 24 volts. Okay. After that, I am pretty much done wiring my Aquastat. Okay. The only thing I have left really is my, um, my ground. And my ground is right here. Okay. And ground. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There's my ground, my ground wire. Okay. So after all of that is said and done, I can now just simply focus on my igniter uh, and my gas valve. That is all relatively cut and dry, especially if we already know how to wire a gas valve and an igniter. That just is basically just plug and play. So we go to PV. We can go to MV, right? Because remember, PV is my pilot valve, MV is my main valve, and PV MV is my my common. Okay, my igniter is just simply nothing more than my cable powering up my my spark igniter. And then obviously I would have to have my ground to help my my flame rectification to prove that my pilot did light and that my burners did light. Okay, so the sequence of operation of this particular uh, diagram is obviously once my thermostat closes and calls for heat, I am now have completed that circuit which will now send the signal down to my burner which will then tell my ignition module that hey I have a call for heat. The ignition module will now send my its signal to the igniter to ignite the pilot hood which will then ignite the main burners. Once the main burners have lit and the boiler now starts to heat up at approximately about 160 degrees or so, the circulator will then come on giving me my, my heat to the space.